It's 99 Jams, Miami's number one for hip hop and RB. Afternoon, get down with the tough guy, DJ and Tice. Your girl, Super Cindy, and we are honored yes. live in the studio. Yes. Yes. No calling in if you, honey. <laughs> live in the studio, we have Mayor Andrew Gillum. What's up, everybody? What's hey. going on? I'm extremely proud to be on 99 Jams. I know this station, having grown up down here, yes. was born in Miami Dade, Jackson Hospital, uh, uh, grew up in Richmond Heights. Shout out to the Heights. Yeah. And, uh, and while I'm at it, Pariah, Goose, Lorraine, you know, anyway. Yeah. All okay, right. you know the stuff. <laughs> so we have some time with you, yes. so we want to get right into the meat and potatoes of everything that we've been wanting to ask you. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, okay, first of all, this past weekend, just last weekend mm-hmm. now, how do you feel about the current temperature in our country? Yeah. It's like political, racial, yeah. violence, like yeah. w- what's going on? Well, I tell you, I mean, uh, unfortunately, the political discourse in this country has suffered to the point where people can no longer just disagree over the substance of an issue. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's plenty out there on the issue side to have differences about. But what we haven't done is seen that elevated to a level where people result to political violence. Right. right against each other. I don't like you. I don't like the way you look. What religion or or lack thereof you have. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what color of your skin might be. Mm-hmm. Um, these bombing, uh, you know, the bombing suspect particularly who, once we found out who he was, you know, we went to his social media. He's got stuff about me all over it. Wow. I mean, mm-hmm. we had to make some quick changes in our own home and in our own family. And when I think about um, how blessed we were that none of those packages made it to their mm-hmm. intended recipients, yes. so that nobody. Would would lose their lives, and then you wake up and you see what happened in Pittsburgh, where oh. mm-hmm. in a synagogue similar to mm-hmm. what we saw at Mother Emanuel Church, mm-hmm. where people were worshiping, right? Where they're in their houses of worship, right. and their lives are snuffed out by an anti semite. I mean, what I've asked my opponent, because he trades in some of this stuff as well, just as President Trump does, mm-hmm. where they use this dangerous rhetoric. I mean, stuff like Gillum is anti police. He's lawless. He hates law. I mean. You realize that there are people who are out there that are listening to that who might be susceptible to believing it. Mm -hmm. And if your husband or your spouse or your father or your son uh, has, you know, is in the law enforcement field, might that cause you to act out some kind of way? I mean, that that is dangerous rhetoric. And what we need in this time is not leaders who are going to stoke fear and anger, but those who are going to work to inspire, to lift up. Uh, We can have our differences on policy, and Lord knows between me and my opponent, there are plenty. Uh, But that never has to result to the kind of dangerous political discourse that we see happening today. It is deadly. And and we got to be more careful. In political things back in the day, you would always see negative ad campaigns, and you just take it for a grain of salt, like, Okay, yeah. you either believe it or you don't and move forward. But now, like these negative ads, it's crazy. people are taking it to heart I know it. and getting I violent know it. about it. I know it. So let's discuss the negative ads yeah. that are on air about you. Yeah. Since you were in Tallahassee as the mayor, we may not down here in South Florida know. Right. So I saw a commercial talking about when there was a hurricane and a storm that you turned away the trucks. What is that all about? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, in <laughs> fact, like, every ad that Mr. DeSantis has run mm-hmm. about me has been independently ranked as a false ad. Mm. Uh, I, what I really regret is that there's nothing as an elected official, as a candidate for office, that I can legitimately do to get those ads pulled off. Mm. Um, it is such in the, in today's political day and age that you're allowed to run these negative ads even if there's no truth to it. Um, now, we've not run a single negative ad, I, I mean uh, a false ad about Mr. DeSantis, yet he has repeatedly resulted to lying about me and lying about my record. We had a storm hit my community that that was the strongest, the first hurricane in 30 years. Mm. The city of Tallahassee has more tree cover almost of any mm. uh, city uh, our size in the country, right? Almost half my city wow. is covered in it's trees, so, right? Yeah. And so we had a storm come and knock out 90% of our power. We had uh, our sewer system that was 100% knocked out. People's lives were put in danger. Trees coming down on homes, on buildings, on cars, right? And unfortunately, the Republican Party hyper politicized. It. They put out all these lies. That whole thing about turning away, uh, that came from the, the, the uh, a political operative on the right. They ended up having to go back and apologize for putting uh, false information out there about what we did. And so, but they didn't. But they didn't publicize the apology. Oh, right? of course not. They, they, they listen, won't do that. They, they, they never do, do. But you know what? What what I have confidence in is that uh, there are people who know who I am, know my record. We just dealt with a storm, Hurricane Michael, yeah. had similar impacts in my area. Mm-hmm. We were back up. 
up. Everybody had their power back. Ninety-five uh, percent of them within three days, within seventy-two wow. hours. Wow. We've had storms hit this state where people go weeks. Yes. This was a, this was the thro- This was the third strongest storm to hit the United States. Period. Right. Mm. It was seven wow. miles per hour short of a category five hurricane. Wow. Right. Andrew was a category five. Uh, we still had our house down here when Andrew came through. We yeah. literally were getting meals ready to eat, dropped off in Richmond Park yeah. in mm. South Dade. Mm. Homestead I obliterated. obliterated. I mean, completely. it was just uh, so the fact that that, 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 that these moments don't uh, conceal who we are. They reveal who we are. Okay. Uh, my opponent had an opportunity to really demonstrate leadership. Mm-hmm. Instead, while my community was gearing up for a category four near category five storm to swipe past us he was running in negative advertisements in our area it has been the political history here in the state of florida that when hurricanes are coming when natural disasters are anticipated everything is on pause you pull down your ads i didn't have negative ads running in that part of the state we pulled our ads down Mm. why because when people are running for their lives when they're trying to get information to help them get out of harm's way why would you interrupt that with negative advertising it's the wrong head space. It doesn't demonstrate leadership. Ron DeSantis showed us who he was. So, Mayor, we really got to talk about this racist robocall. I am like, when I heard it, yeah, I, I was today. like, my mouth dropped. Like, I could yeah. not believe it's actually... Yeah. Um, I'm not sure who's responsible for it. We don't know. But what is your reaction yeah. to this um, racist robocall? Well, I'll tell you, this, these, 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 this is the second time that this has happened in the course of this race that we know of, mm-hmm. where neo-Nazis have recorded these ads and put them into, into people's phone lines here in the state of Florida. Um, these are the same groups that the president tries to create moral equivalence, equivalency between neo-Nazis and people who protest bo- police brutality, mm-hmm. basically saying there are bad player, good people and bad players on both sides. Are you mm-hmm. kidding me? Right. You're, you're talking about you're, you're providing harbor to people who legitimately don't uh, who legitimately in their own opinions believe that I shouldn't exist because of the color of my skin or my religion or the country of origin, that there's no moral equivalency to that. There used to be a time whether you were a Democrat or a Republican, we all decried that as what it was, hate mm-hmm. speech, right? Mm-hmm. Yet we now give cover to it. My opponent um, was a moderator over a way, racist uh, Facebook page. He co-authored, ra- rather, authored a book that legitimized, or at least a- attempted to legitimize slavery. He spoke Spoken at these racist uh, um, um, uh, conferences, he took money, what, 70 or so thousand dollars from a donor who called President Barack Obama a Muslim N-I-G-G-E-R and then refused to give the money back when he was called on it. Mm -hmm. So how do you expect us to believe that you don't harbor these sentiments when... Yeah, these folks aren't coming to my aid, right? That's why I said in the debate, listen, I'm not calling my opponent a racist, but the racists seem to believe he's a racist. That's why they're activating and organizing on his behalf. Um, and in my opinion, all leaders ought to decry that kind of hate speech. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anytime you shut see it, it down, you have to call it out and shut it down. Agreed. But unfortunately, they're very slow to do that. I wanted to ask you, Mayor, if you won. When we win. I, I can't say yeah. that. So I know you can't. I'm glad but you said but that. <laughs> I didn't say that. Okay. If you win, Mayor. I love that. We put her in some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what is your first your first initiative that you are attacking? We're going to expand Medicaid. Um, mm-hmm. It is a sin uh, that the governor of this state has refused to extend access to health care for over 800,000 people in our state. Mm. The Affordable Care Act was passed, obviously, under President Obama. Mm. Each state had the opportunity to expand access to Medicaid. These are working people who don't make enough to be able to afford their own health care. Um, by refusing to extend access to health care to them, we turned away six billion dollars a year that could have come into the state of Florida to help provide that insurance. Oh. Health care is one of the most ballooning parts of our state budget. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that we turned that away is a it, it is a sin. It ought to be a shame. We're going to expand it. But that's not it. We also have to deal with education right now. Our teachers in the state of Florida are paid the 45th lowest salary out of all 50 states. Mm. We're the third biggest state in America. Mm-hmm. Our teachers are paid at the bottom, right? Um, we got we need criminal justice reform uh, in, in this state. We got Amendment 4 on the ballot, which will yes. automatically restore rights to about a million former felons. Mm. Um, if it passes, and I'm 
I'm, I'm certainly hoping it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if it doesn't, it's the governor and the cabinet that makes the decision around who gets their rights restored. Oh, wow. uh, right. So it mm-hmm. matters who's governor of the state of Florida. But criminal justice reform doesn't begin and end just with a vote. Uh, when May, when I was mayor of Tallahassee, uh, I still am. But previously, we banned the box in my city. Uh, when you apply for a job, we don't ask you about your criminal background history unless oh, wow. answering yes is a disqualifier. Wow. If it's not, we're going to measure you on your merit. Are you qualified? Can you mm-hmm. do the work? Will right. you make a good employee? We can't tell people that we want them to pull themselves up by the bootstrap and then erect every barrier imaginable Mm -hmm. to keep them from being able to do just that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to stem the flow of people uh, going into the criminal element, make sure that they can have a job that is a job with dignity where they can earn a wage and take care of themselves and their families. That's one of the best ways to curb crime, one of the best ways to keep our community safe, yet we're not doing it right now. When we win this race, we're going to work on that. Right. Speak to our listeners about the importance of voting. Yeah. Like right now in front of you, I have yeah. my, my, I'm mailing out my uh, absentee ballot. ballot. Yes, she honey. wanted to make sure to show you. I, I love it. You. I'm impressed. <laughs> Nobody look at my signature. I'm, in, I'm, I'm mailing impressed. mine out today. Yes. But like a lot of people that I speak to that I'm like, go out and vote, go out. They're like, it doesn't count. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. What do we tell these young people yeah. that just don't believe? Well, I tell you, it's not just young people. There are a lot of people, unfortunately, who just have absolved themselves of the process of voting. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a shame. Mm. You cannot complain. You can go on Snapchat and on Facebook and on Twitter and whatever other platform you use to complain about a life and the society that we now live in if you didn't vote. Right. Because you're complicit in the outcome. There were lots of people, six million fewer people voted in 2016 than voted in 12. And look who's in the White House. Now, we can complain about him all day. We can say how much he divides this country all day long. If we don't show up and participate in the process, we have no place to complain. And guess what else? People are counting on you not to vote. They already don't take you seriously. They already don't address your issues because as far as you're con- they're concerned, you don't matter. Mm. If you don't have the power to put them in office or the power to take them out of office through your vote, it is as well as you don't matter to a lot of these folks. The reason why I join forums like this and campaign in places where people say, look, young people are not going to vote. I do it because uh, just as we talk to older voters, we do them the respect of going and asking for their votes. Mm. I want to do our communities the respect of going and asking for their vote and asking them for the only thing in life my mother ever told me to ask for, and that's a chance. Mm. Uh, I want people to give me a chance to show them what we can do together in this state, but we can't get that done if we don't vote. Uh, So if you care about it, if you care about the outcome, if you care about changing lives and community and society and future trajectories, then you have to be involved in the process. The absence of your involvement is your silence and it's your complicity. You're complicit in what Donald Trump is doing. Mm -hmm. You're complicit in what the hard right is doing. You're complicit in these racist, xenophobic, uh, 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 anti-LGBT movements that are taking place all over the place that are being given safe harbor because there are not enough people of goodwill who are willing to get involved in the process. Well, we want to thank you. How many days to vote? We are eight days away. And guess what? We're voting now. Election day is a myth. Today is election day. If you're under the sound of our voices, there are early voting precincts open all throughout every county in the state of Florida. Do not wait. God knows what tomorrow holds. Do it now. Why delay what you can get done today? Uh, Get it done. Go vote. Go vote early and take somebody with you. Arrive with five. I'm encouraging people to visit our website at andrewgillum.com slash vote because if there's something we can do to help you get to the poll, help you learn your poll, we want to do that. If we do that, um, y'all, if we vote, we win. If people vote, we win. And, uh, you know, this is 99 Jams. Last yeah. time we spoke, we talked about Walk It Talking. Ah, Walk It Like a Talking. That's a theme song, right? Yeah, well, you know, don't tell me, Ghost. Uh, uh, I ain't yeah, paid for none of them that. rights, all right? <laughs> is that the only song you um, you really listen to right now? You know what? Um, I, I wish I could listen to more music right mm-hmm. now. I, to be very honest with y'all, and I know we're on 99 Jams. Right. Um, when I have time to listen to music, I'm literally listening to gospel at every opportunity. He needs My, inspiration. I'm telling yeah, you. Very that, important. Look, <laughs> the, 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 I got to get my headspace right. Every right. day we are going into battle. Yes. Um, and and last night we were in Orlando and had a gospel fest as a way to remind people that it's time to vote. We packed out a uh, Reverend Reva Timms's church in Orlando, a huge mega church, and people were there in droves, standing room only practically, and our souls were fed. And so at this time, I'm gonna get back to the second. Okay. But at this okay. time, <laughs> look, uh, uh, my faith 
uh, and my soul has to be fed. Uh, right. And so I'm kind of, I'm kind of on this gospel tip right now. Well, okay. it's okay every morning at <laughs> yeah. five a.m. Y'all got it. Right. That's God. right. Good. On Sundays we have gospel <laughs> mornings till noon. There it is. We want to thank you for thank stopping you. Are by you the afternoon it's my treat. get down. <laughs> we just want to see the results. That's November right. six, Tuesday's the last day to vote. Now until then, vote. That's vote, it. Vote. 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 Get out there and vote, everybody. Yes. We vote, we win. Yes. Ninety nine jams. The afternoon get down.